Since Pig works on top of MapReduce, why not just use MapReduce? Well, Pig was developed because writing a MapReduce job takes a long time. We can do a line-by-line -line comparison of a MapReduce job and a Pig Latin script, and we'll see that Pig has a lot fewer lines. Because of the fewer lines of code, Pig allows for developers to quickly test their queries. Pig ships with a command line tool called the Grunt Shell, which actually allows for developers to run their Pig scripts directly on the cluster versus having to compile it in Java and deploy it out to the network just to test that query. Another reason for using Pig over traditional Java MapReduce is because Pig doesn't require developers to have any Java experience. This is a very important role for Pig to fill because now data analysts are able to write MapReduce jobs in a high-level language similar to SQL as opposed to Java. So with fewer lines of code, the ability to test queries quicker, and no need for Java experience, you can see why Pig has become a great tool for many people in the Hadoop ecosystem. Let's jump into some code and look at a Java MapReduce word count application. We wanted to pay special attention to the complexity and the number of lines because we're going to see how it compares to a Pig Latin script that will do the same thing. Here we've got an example from the Apache Hadoop wiki. This is the Java MapReduce application. It's actually a word count application. And so what it's going to do is just going to count the number of words from a file input that we'll have. You'll notice that we're importing about four or five different MapReduce libraries. We'll notice it's about 65 lines of code, but that's not including our spaces. It's not a very complex application, but it's definitely something an analyst wouldn't be able to write. Now let's look at this, an application that does the same thing as this one, but is written in Pig Latin. Here we have a Pig Latin script that does the same thing as our Java Word application that we had just looked at. Wow, that's only seven lines of code versus the 45 lines of code we saw in the Java application. In fact, the entire script fit into the top part of the slide. That's not something we could have done with our Java application we just looked at. You'll also notice how we're not having to worry about importing different MapReduce libraries. That's something that's being done behind the scenes for us. I also wanted to draw your attention to the syntax. Look how similar it looks to SQL. We have keywords like order by, descending, group by, all the words that are similar to what we're used to seeing in SQL. Even without Pig Latin experience, we can begin to make sense of this script. For example, it looks like the first line, we're loading some text file. The next line looks like maybe we're iterating over that text file. And then the third line, it looks like we're filtering results based on maybe it's a regular expression. Then we are grouping over filtered words and taking word groupings and iterating them to get a, some kind of count. Once we have the word count, we are putting them into a descending order. Finally, it looks like the ordered words are being stored in a text file named results. Don't worry if you aren't able to follow along with this example, because in the next module, we'll dive deep into the Pig Latin syntax. We were just showing this as a comparison to the Java application. Suppose we wanted to convert our temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit. How would we go about doing that? We have a couple different options in Pig. The first one is we can just simply take the value and create an expression inside of a Pig script. So for example, we'll take a for each, we'll look over the weather raw, and we'll generate the daily high, and we'll multiply it by 1.8 and add 32. And that's the formula we're using to go from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Then we'll just dump those results. But what if we had to do this on multiple different occasions and in different pig scripts a lot of times? Wouldn't it just be easier to create a function that we could use to get a lot of use out of it? Pig also offers us another option to be able to create a function to do that. It's called user-defined functions. So in this example, what we would do is we would write our for each, we would generate, but instead of having to put the formula in the pig script, we would actually just call to Fahrenheit. So this is just like what we did in module three when we were using the two string to convert our dates. Well, let's look at how we can do this. A user defined function is just a custom code written to create a special process for us in Pig Latin. For example, like we were talking about the two string that we used in module three. This is one of the most powerful things in Pig Latin because it allows you to create custom code and insert it and use it in your Pig scripts very easily. So what if you wanted to write your own user defined functions? What are your options? Well, there's a couple of different languages that support it. Of course, the first one you've probably already guessed is going to be Java because Pig's written on top of Java and Java is a... You're also going to be able to use Python. You can actually use JavaScript to write user-defined functions, Ruby, and Groovy. Let's just remember that 
with all the support of all these languages, the one that we're going to probably be able to use the most and you're going to see the most benefits from being able to use is Java. But that doesn't mean that you can't create powerful scripts with the other languages. It's just with Java being that native language, you're going to be able to use, you're going to be able to create more powerful scripts and have more, more options. So now let's look at an example of a UDF to convert our temps from Celsius to Fahrenheit. This is just a sample UDF. We're not going to be able to compile and run this without having a deeper knowledge of Java. And that's kind of not what we're looking at in this course, but we just did want to pay attention to how simple and how easy it is to create these. In the next video, we're actually going to look at some that are already created by the community that we can use already. Now I've opened up a class that we've created here. That's going to be our two Fahrenheit. So this is what we would use if we wanted to create a, a user defined function to take Celsius and go to Fahrenheit. So you'll see that we've imported a couple different packages from pig. And like I said, we're just looking at this example so that we can see how we would create a user defined function. It's not so much about you learning to use Java or learning to create your own user defined functions, but it's just giving you an example of how simple they are. So we've got our public class of two Fahrenheit here and we're accepting in a float. And then on line nine and 10, we're actually going to do some error checking, making sure that we're not getting a null and making sure that we have the appropriate size and then return null if that's the case. So we're not changing the value of null field. And then as we move into line 12, you'll see that we're taking our float and we're getting the input and we're running our formula that you saw that we created in our first script, which is the multiplying by 1.8 and then adding 32. And then we're going to return that. And when we return that, that's just the same that we were doing. When we were dumping the file out in pig, but this is actually going to return it to that function. And then when we dump it out, we'll actually see our two Fahrenheit temperature. There's not a lot to creating your own function. It's just having to have some background in Java and having to understand how we can compile this and how some of the keywords work in Java. But you can see that here we're getting away with, really creating only a couple of lines of code, but it's preventing us from having to use our formula each time we wanted to convert some to Fahrenheit. And this is something that we could let other users in our organization use if we were constantly having to take Celsius data and go to Fahrenheit, instead of having to remember and use that formula each time, it's just something we can turn over and you would just call the to Fahrenheit function. Now that we know how these user defined functions work, Let's go ahead and look at some that were created by the community and that are readily available for us to use, even in our current pig editor in the Hortonworks sandbox.